Hi guys, it's Fawaz Muhammad Yusuf, and I'm back with something a little different today. I've been meaning to transition into tightly edited videos, and this is going to be the first of many. So let's get to it. Devil May Cry 5 is one of my favorite games to come out this year. It was a triumphant return to the fast-paced, combo-heavy combat of the series, and it brought with it some very interesting boss battles as well. I was originally going to capture all this footage on Dante Must Die difficulty, but a few minutes in the arena with Virgil made me think better of that idea. So this has all been done in Son of Sparta. Turns out I'm not as good as I thought I was. The bosses on this list have been judged based primarily on how fun they were to fight. Uh, normally I would take lore into consideration. But I honestly have no idea what's happening half the time in this game, so I took a hard pass on that. So with that out of the way, on to our list. I had a feeling you'd say that. The number five spot goes to the trio boss of Griffin, Shadow, and Nightmare. Honestly, this boss shouldn't work. I generally despise group boss fights, and this paired with the convoluted nature of how you kill this boss should have put me off. But it didn't. So there you go. What's funny is I enjoyed this fight despite not realizing the nostalgia implications due to never having completed the original Devil May Cry. Sacrilegious, I know. The wide variety of moves all three enemies possess requires constant switching between your stances to keep up, which results in a very fast-paced feeling fight, which is good enough for fifth place on this list. The third boss you face in the game, and spoiler alert, the only Nero boss on this list, Artemis is probably most players' first true challenge. She uses a wide variety of projectiles to cause the player a wide assortment of headaches. Truthfully though, once you get the hang of dealing with her shenanigans, you realize the biggest issue is just the random drones constantly stealing your lock-on and resisting the urge to take a nap while she charges up her supernova. Seriously, look at this thing. All that aside though, it's a perfect early boss battle that teaches you about Nero's mobility and air combos, both of which will come in handy for the rest of your playthrough, and these reasons are why she's number 4 on my list. Now we get to the real meat of the list. All the bosses in my top 3 have one thing in common, Royal Guard. I love this stance, despite being awful with it. and. Any boss that allows me to go for them multiple times will always rank highly for me. His first two phases feature him mixing up his projectiles from his previous modes with some good old fashioned ass kicking. I don't know what it is about his melee animations in this mode, but this just looks so hilarious to me. That is until he hits me. All that aside, it's a fun battle made better by one of the few cutscenes in this franchise that really hit home with me. Honestly, his third phase, feeling like a bullet hell shooter, is the only thing keeping him out of my top two. The penultimate spot on this list goes to Dante's first boss encounter. Cavalier Angelo is just a fun, fast-paced boss battle that rewards Dante for using all four of his stances. Like most bosses in this game, it can be defeated in a variety of ways, be it projectile spam with the trusty rocket launcher, rail guarding its telegraphed attacks, good old fashioned sword on sword action, or some combination of all three. The fight is the perfect example of a boss that's greater than the sum of its parts, which apparently is all one needs to make the second spot on my list. I mean, who else was it going to be? I almost didn't want to put him here because of how predictable of a number one choice it would have been, but then I realized putting anyone else would have been disingenuous, so here we are. Everything that I loved about Cavalier Angelo is present in this fight, the fast paced combat, the awesome theme, and the way it rewards parrying, you then toss in the brutal difficulty, and you have my favorite boss in the game. Seriously. Maybe I'm just bad, or maybe Virgil specifically punishes the way I like to play, but on every difficulty, 
except Dante must die, ironically enough. This was by far the toughest boss to beat. Nothing he does is particularly hard to deal with. It's just he does so much damage. You could be playing a perfect game, make one mistake, and lose half your health. However, none of this should be taken as a negative. The challenge Virgil presents makes it all the more rewarding when you finally defeat him. And that is why he's my favorite boss in Devil May Cry 5. Well, there you have it, people. I hope you enjoyed watching this list as much as I enjoyed making it. Look forward to more of these in the future, although I intend to tackle different types of videos, not just boss rankings. I'm also open to suggestions, so please leave your ideas in the comment section, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. As always, this was Fawaz Muhammad Yusuf, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.